Brand new street and brand new me Side by side by friends I need Don't you tell me that you're in town already know We jolly well go. Alright guys, it's Monday today. Uh, I thought I'd just quickly come on. Um, I'm driving to the hospital because I have a rheumatology appointment. Four o'clock, it's now seven minutes past three. So I need to get there, park up and then just sort of walk down to the hospital from like the car park bit. Um, it shouldn't be, I know it's gonna be visiting times, but most clinics, most clinics will be over. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd just come on, have a little chin wag with you because this is when it's peaceful. <laughs> Because at the moment, obviously we've got the dog, so we've still got Pepper with us. Um, we've got Olive and Bess with us still. Olive and Bess go home Wednesday, so it's two days time. Off the top of my head, I can't remember when Pepper goes home. I think he might go home the following week, I think. So yeah, it's uh, sort of trying to chat at home. It is right now a little bit hectic. Um, I want to give, you know what I'm like, you know, I like to really keep the house tidy and all the rest of it. And it kind of messes with my anxiety if I can't do it. Let me just get out of this junction. Are you going to let me go? Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, well, obviously I'm keeping it tidy and everything, because I'm going around with the duster, keeping on top of all the jobs, keeping it tidy. Um, but I need to put the hoo around again. And uh, it's just quite noisy when I hoover, because obviously they all bark at the hoover. For some reason they all do it. I know a lot of dogs do. My Elsie hates the hoover but she's a little bit scared of it for some reason. So she will bark and attack it, but then after a while she will leave it alone and just disappear and get out of the way. Whereas some of them just like to chase it the whole time. Um, even if Chris takes them into the garden, then they know it's on, so they still bark. So I'll try and organize for him to walk them whilst I do that. Um, but I really need to give it a good hoover. And I need to wash the floor kitchen and dining room floor. Pepper is a little bit of a pickle, he is, because he he's the black poodle and um, he is still a male dog. He's, he's came on now, he's quite old, I think he's about 12-ish, something like that. Um, and he was a stud, you know, he was like, he's got a very, very, very good uh, breeding line that he is from. And um, so he's kind of recommended by the Kennel Club, or he was, he doesn't do it anymore, but he could, he could still deliver. <laughs> no doubt about that. Um, but because he's old and, you know, they kind of think, don't put him through being castrated now. There's not really any point, is there, at his age? Um, and I don't mind, it's just that he is terrible for weeing and I have to keep lots of puppy pads down and, that, and because he's still full male and the majority of the dogs we have actually are female and you only need one female in the mix anyway and that would be Elsie he, and Teddy obviously but Teddy is a younger male so there's not really a lot of competition for top, fighting for, for top dog because where Pepper, although he's full male, um, because he's older, like the younger ones come in and they like, it's Teddy's home, he's already claimed that spot as being top dog, but he kind of marks everything. And, uh, you know, I mop things, well, we all do, we all mop things up the best we can and, and everything, but sort of every, so a couple of days, I want to really give a really, really, really 
good clean and um, it's been a couple of days. It's not dirty, it's not smelly or anything like that because obviously I clean it, clean it properly. But I want to do like the whole floors and sort of, I mean if it's ever on skirt boards and things like that then obviously I'll clean all of that. Um, but I just want to go around everywhere, pull a few things out and it's very awkward when they are there. So. Um, my week for when they go <laughs> is, I think I've got, I don't know, maybe a week, 10 days before another one comes in. Um, and I th think that's Frankie anyway. Um, Frankie, he's not a demanding dog, is he at all? He's the one that can't see. And, um, so... Yeah, I'll be able to get loads done then. Although, having said that, he does bark at the flipping hoover. Yeah, he does. But he's not a problem. He's so easy to sort of manage. So, you know, I'm not having to constantly wash floors. But, um... Yeah, so that's why you haven't really seen me do many sort of like clean with me reset videos or anything like that because I just haven't been doing them I've been doing the work but not filming them anyway enough about me how are you how are you all doing are you all well are you all okay I know there's been a lot of um, tummy bugs and stuff hasn't there? I've got a cold back again I have a cold it seems to go or does it or does it just like hide there to fool me to think it has gone and then it's back again I've got it back again it's not too bad I've got a bit of a headache with it but it's not really really bad you know it's like it does feel a bit behind the eyes and the nose and this is why I left earlier the traffic coming out of here it's because what's the time now quarter past three once I get on the motorway I'll be okay but it's getting out of here where we live because it's like school run time. Yeah, loads of people that I know and have seen on Facebook and that, they've all had all these sickness and diarrhea bugs. Lots of that going around. Touch wood. I haven't had that. Let's hope it stays that way. I'm quite tired as well. That's the other thing, isn't it? Like when you've got, like when you're working, when you've got the dogs and that, it's like when I used to go out of the house to work I would be up say six in the morning um, I'd finish work at, and I'd start work at nine but it would take me a while because I had to you know get there and everything I'd finish at six get home maybe seven ish do dinner for everybody like even when the kids were at home and everything do dinner and shower get everything ready for the next day watch a bit of tv all the rest of it I don't know I did it now honestly don't um and I mean it's not the same life is a lot at a lot slower pace now thank goodness because obviously since leaving employment you know my health has suffered a lot more and of course that doesn't that doesn't help either does it let's get through these lights yes at least when I used to walk through the door and do dinner or if Chris was there before me he would start dinner but invariably I was home first because at the time Chris was uh, working in the city in London because um, he used to work for a bank an investment bank in um, in the city and of course he used to have to get the train home from you know get the train every morning to Waterloo home from Waterloo and of course, you never really knew how smoothly they were going to run either. Um, but he would generally be home a bit later than me, but there were the occasions when he was home before me. Or if he had some days off that I didn't have days off. Um, or weekends, he didn't work weekends, not generally. Unless it was something specific he had to do for a weekend. And then they would, if he had to work for the bank, at the weekend it was quite a, quite privileged because they would say to him um book your hotel and they had a standard of hotels um they had to be a certain 
hotels, certain few types of hotels, um, because it was all to do with the bank's image. And they would say to him, you know, like, uh, book your wife a train ticket so that she can, after she finishes work, she can come straight up on the train and um, they'd have a car there waiting for me, but Chris would be there anyway. And we'd go back to the hotel and they used to say, take her to a show, take her shopping, put it all on the bank. And it was a luxurious lifestyle back then. And so we've had a good innings with that, you know. I can remember on one occasion, that's if you're interested in it. I mean, this isn't a braggy thing or anything like that. Come on, look guys, you know me. I'm as down to earth as the earth is. You know, I've had my moments in my life where I've not had much at all. Um, there was a period in my life where I ran away when I was about 14. I ran away from home. If you want to know more about that, you probably will because it's quite interesting actually. Um, but if you do, let me know and I'll sort of do a video on that. But I did, I ran away. I also had a horrible, abusive father. Yeah, and I know I've had good times, you know, like when I met my first husband and everything and we married and got our house and, you know, and I started having children and, and you know, things, things were good and we weren't, we weren't poor, but we weren't, we were comfortable, we weren't like well off, but we were like most people, comfortable and happy and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then we've had moments when there hasn't been quite as much money to live comfortably and so we've had to rein it all in and pinch, pinch, money pinch and stuff like that. I'm just going to open my window, I'm so hot. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I've had, I've had good years, I've had not so good years and I've had some shite years, honestly. But other than actually having my children, my best years have been like the years Chris and I have been together and he says it exactly the same. He had two children from a previous marriage and um, and he you know he says the same obviously if it wasn't for your children then it would be like the well it is the best years of our life you know just we didn't share the children we didn't share children together when like we were younger and all the rest of it. Um, but we certainly share them all now, grandchildren, it's lovely. Um, so, where do I go from here? So yeah, I was saying, wasn't I? So then, of course, um, Chris had a great job. And we were very, very lucky. And we had holiday, you know, we, we did. We had a great time. And the kids had, we were able to treat the kids a lot and all the rest of it. There was this one time that Chris had to work um, a weekend, did I go up on a Friday? Yeah, so I went up on Friday, so they said again to him, like, book, book into the hotel, um, oh my gosh, it was beautiful, which one, I can't remember the name of it, because we did quite a few, um, anyway, so he booked the hotel, and then, um, and so I got the train up, and, you know, was met at the train station with Chris, went back to the hotel, beautiful place, you know, it had like, marble bathroom, marble bath and everything. It was one of those where they, they do like a turn down service and everything with chocolates and all the rest of it. But it was beautiful. And then, because Chris had to work on the Saturday, but he literally only had to go into work for half an hour. It's crazy, isn't it? Crazy. He had to go in for half an hour. And then, so, he got up and he went to work. Um, I had room service for breakfast and I poured a beautiful, beautiful bath, bubble bath. I was luxuriating in this beautiful bubble bath and then he came home from work and that was it. That was all he had to do and yet we had the whole weekend, you know, 
all paid for and everything on the bank. But then that was the, you know, that was all part of his job, you see. Yeah, um, he wasn't a banker, by the way. He didn't, he wasn't, him, he, he wasn't a trader. Chris wasn't a trader. Chris looked after all the security in the bank and sort of like put security programs together and did things like sweeping, bug sweeping and, and a lot more than that. There was a lot more than that obviously involved, but that's a brief description of what he did. He, he obviously didn't get the money that the traders get, of course, and neither would he ever want to be a trader. It was such a burnout job. Honestly, they couldn't do it for probably more than maybe 10 years. It was like the trading floor of this particular bank was the size of, at least the size of a football pitch. It was huge. And they sat there with like 10, 20 monitors each and it's just like, oh, so stressful. And then they do about maybe 10 years or so and then they kind of go into a bit of burnout. And so a lot of them go into like back offices afterwards to sort of work in there and the younger ones coming up, you know, go in the trading, on the trading floor. So they get great money, but w along with it, they have a great responsibility and they get great bonuses. But Chris used to get a bonus, despite the fact he wasn't a trader, it was part of the bank's ethics that he did used to get um, bonuses as well, which were very, very good. There was one occasion as well. I think he finished doing a some something. I think it was he had arranged some he had arranged all the security and everything for their branch in Tel Aviv. And um, but it, it could be switched on in this country so they he did that. He could like, actually sort of switch on everything from the UK so that bit was all complete and like his his boss said to him um, any chance you're gonna be sort of free today and he said well, yeah can be they said um, could you could you take this to where was it now was it to Zurich I'm sure it was Zurich no, I know what it was. He'd gone to, had he gone to Germany or somewhere? Or Austria, where'd he gone? Germany, I think, I wanna say. Well, it's wherever the Audi factory is anyway. Um, he'd gone there. He was like, you're there to sort out um, security things. And that's it. I'm, I th I'm sure it was when he was there. They said to him, have you got, any time this afternoon and he said I can't have why I think I'm getting this right it's one or the other of those two things anyway and they said oh we need you to take this document to Zurich I'm sure it was Zurich Switzerland yeah we need you to take this document to Switzerland he said oh okay so they said we've booked you a flight so anyway could you go to the airport blah 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 get the flight blah 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 all the rest of it Anyway, so he got there and it was a Learjet they'd booked for him to take this, the only flight that they could get. So they'd booked this Learjet for him, so he was the only one on it. All right, mate, you want to get in there, do you? Okay. He landed, um, sort of had to go through a security bit, then he just had to hand over a document. Um, that was all done, or like, you know, all the necessaries were done for that, and literally fly back again. Um, that was to deliver, um, is it Bell Bond? And I mean, it's just bizarre, isn't it? Because I'm pretty sure if you're in possession of one of those, it's, it's yours until you hand it over. So the legal owner of that is yours. And it was for millions and millions and millions. <laughs> So he's had a lot of responsibility on his hands, sort of like over the years with the job, you know. Flying here, flying there, going here, there and everywhere. Yeah, he's had a, he's had a good, a good career experience. And of course, you know, now he's retired and he took early retirement. 
we were fortunate that he could take early retirement. At the time that I stopped working, because I was being made redundant, and I've like put that in a, I've done a video on that before. If I remember, I'll link it down below if you want to listen to that, if you want to have a look at that video. And so, yeah, and that was like when I started up my dog business company, because that's what I wanted to do. And so we, kids were leaving home we didn't need a bigger house anymore we cleared our mortgage and we bought the next house which was a four bed victorian house i loved that house loved it i wish we still lived there but there was absolutely no parking because it was right in the city there was no parking at all and that was becoming such a nightmare it was awful. I mean, if you weren't home by, say, six, seven at the latest, then you had no hope, really, in parking anywhere. You were, like, roads away. So that is why we left there, really, um, because the parking was diabolical. And also, I think, because the house was starting to show... I mean, it was immaculate inside. It was immaculate outside. So it's a beautiful house. Um, but it you could see it was going to need a lot of maintaining sort of as the years went on from the outside, like repointing. And, you know, it was an old house. Um, so we thought, do you know what? Let's just like, let's just sell. We don't, we, we don't even need all these bedrooms anymore because like a couple of the boys the twins had gone off traveling and they were in australia and were around the world um I'm almost at the hospital guys so we sold that and then obviously the house we're living in now is what we bought and we were lucky enough to be able to oops uh buy that outright i'm gonna need ground floor living possibly soon or at least get a toilet uh, downstairs because we don't have a downstairs cloakroom. That's what I really need. So it's either going to be full cap for that, which is going to be cheaper than moving, isn't it? So maybe save up for that and uh, see, see if we can get that done. With a bit of uh, configuration. How did I get onto this subject, guys? I don't even remember now. You know me, I waffle, waffle. Waffle, waffle. But so, as I was saying, me, I'm down to earth. Why did I say I was down to earth? I don't remember now. Oh, I'll have to look back at what I've recorded. <laughs> Let's see what the heck I'm chatting about. So we're in the hospital anyway. Come on, Mr. Busman. Come on, my lovely. There's a good boy. I will say though guys when we did have more money and everything we were not selfish with it at all we included all our friends and family in any money that we had available to spend like holidays and you know we'd all have our holidays and I'd, uh, like often have a holiday and we'd include our, our best friends Wendy and Tom that you've heard me talk about before um, you know, I'm a great believer in, I'm a great believer in karma, I really am, a believer in that you reap what you sow, and so if you're, if you've got sort of plenty of something, share it, share it, because that all comes back to you in bucket loads at some point in your life. And it doesn't have to be through money or possessions or anything like that. You know, you can be fulfilled and um, extremely wealthy by it not being a monetary thing at all. Right, well, I'm parking up now in this little park, car park. Actually, it's not little, it's quite big. Okay, I've got space over there. Do, do, do. Right, not here. Right, I'm here now, guys. So I'm here hobbling because <laughs> of my hip, although it's not my hip, apparently. It's 
and the pain is coming from my back. So it took about an hour in there. Uh, all good though, because all my blood tests are, because I have my bloods done every three months and they're showing that everything's, you know, responding very well to all the meds that I'm on and everything. Just to get the back sorted now. So obviously today was rheumatology. Um, so as she said, what was it she said? Structural, it's my structural problem. So hopefully now, I, they might, they should, once I see the spinal surgeon again, he should have sort of plan going forward for me. She's very happy for them to where's it going? Go ahead um, with any surgery. Need to go and get some eggs. I'm totally out of eggs. Um, the last shop I did, they there wasn't any they couldn't deliver any eggs because they just they were out of stock you know being the shortage of all this like salad stuff and eggs especially so i'm gonna see if i can get some eggs that would depend very much what we have for our dinner tonight so yesterday i did um gammon like a gammon roast uh with roast potatoes and all the veg and everything and i thought today because obviously there's leftovers there's gammon left over so I always make sure I get enough so that I can use it on the Monday as well, whatever sort of roast I'm doing. And so I was going to either do a ham, egg and chips with maybe peas or something. But I'm out of eggs, so if I can get eggs, I will do that. If I can't get any eggs today, I will need to pick up some um, baguette or something. Oh, it's bright. Let's put that down a bit. because I will then do um, pea and ham soup. I'm gonna to go to the shops nearer to home, so I'll probably nip into Lidl's. So I've got Lidl's, oh dear, come on. I've got Lidl's, Marks and Spencer's and Iceland all like in a, a row, more or less. Um, failing that I've got the co-op, around the corner for me. But um, yeah, I'm not gonna go to Tesco's or anything like that, which is just sort of not far from here. And the reason being is because if I do that, the time I spend in Tesco's, by the time I come out of there, I'm gonna hit all the work traffic and I'm gonna hit some of it now, but not, not like the worst part. So yeah, all good from a rheumatology point of view, everything's working well and nice and level and blood so yeah everything's looking good with the meds and everything um so i'm kind of like sometime later you know obviously years later with my oh come on then come on you go and not let anybody else out um whereas chrissy he's like at the beginning of his journey bless him like an oldie but goldie <laughs> come on my lovelies hospitals are busy places aren't they they've always got people thank you my darling oh some little man waved me on over the zebra crossing you know it's always busy isn't it you've got buses coming in and cars and people pedestrians where are you going yes yeah, so i'm gonna head off home in the direction of home anyway and uh, pop to the shops and I'm not going to be tempted to go to anywhere like Home Bargains although I could probably get eggs in there but I, that, I won't go in there because I know I'll end up spending a bit of time in there and I'm still not kind of spending 
I'm not on a sort of no spend month, but I'm still not spending a lot if you you know just sort of it's still just really presents and stuff um i picked up the odd little makeup bit here and there but nothing nothing mega um because of course we've got a holiday coming up soon i've got in the diary we've got like a date where chris and i are gonna go to primark i don't know when i last went to primark i really don't know when i last went to primark honestly it was a long long and i mean way back last year sometime um so I'm gonna go to Primark because I just want to pick up some more like cycle shorts to wear under dresses for summertime and possibly a couple of new pairs of leggings because I will be like living in those when we're away I expect because it's not going to be really hot or anything so yeah looking forward to it though because we're going to Amsterdam I don't know if I told you that we're going to Amsterdam I've always wanted to go to see the tulips like all the tulip fields and of course it's a limited time so you need to see it when they're at their best so yeah so that's where we're going and and we're doing a coach holiday I've never done a coach holiday before and uh, normally we have to drive to the airport you know uh, fly and everything but we thought you know what this time let's do a coach holiday so that either one of us can appreciate the views you know and all the places that we go through um and we can totally relax and chill out so it's a whole new experience for us having a coach holiday um but we uh yeah, so you, get, you obviously go to the hotel on the first night. I think we're there for five nights, something like that. Yeah, it's just going to be great to so go to all different places. And, you know, then we've got obviously got the day with all the tulip fields and everything. And different things are organised. Not the sort of holiday we've ever done before. Like, you know, organised trips and organised this and organised that. Um, yeah, it's not normally what we would do. But having said that, I wanted to see the, the tulips. It's been on my bucket list to see the tulips. Um, and I cannot wait. So we said, yep, okay, let's do it. Let's book it and then let's do it so that we don't have to find our own way to all these different places that we want to see. It's all done for us. Normally when we go abroad, it's like if we want to do a trip, we organise it ourselves yeah looking forward to that but obviously it's not going to be hot but it you know it's going to be spring it's going to be spring like so we have got ourselves a new rucksack each so that's going to be like ideal for the day use daily use so we can pop maybe a little jacket in there and um water a few snacks if we want to, sun cream, headache tablets, all the rest, Imodium, <laughs> plasters, you know, your first aid kit, basically, tablets, your medications. Um, yeah, so that, you know, wipes, all the rest of it. So that can just be chucked in our rucksack, cameras, of course, that will be chucked in our um, rucksacks when we're out and about and all the rest of it so yeah really look forward to it is busier going home than it was when I came up to the hospital but I think obviously maybe a lot of people have come out of work now so even though it's half past four or quarter to five now a lot of people sort of making their way home but isn't it lovely to have the lighter not evening, I'm not going to say evening because it's not evening time, is it? But late afternoon, I mean, it didn't seem five minutes ago that it was really dark at this time of day. And then suddenly, you know, you know, you've got that promise of spring on its way, which is lovely. Sort of see in the trees, leaves are coming back and, you 
know, buds on the bushes and flowers and, you know, it's just pretty, it's lovely. But when, yeah, when we are in Amsterdam, I will do as much filming as I can. Let me know if you have been, what you recommend and if you've been over to see the tulips. Apparently, you know, they have the most beautiful, beautiful tulip fields in Turkey because I did read that that's where, tu uh, that's where tulips originate from, is Turkey. Yeah. Chris will be at home all anxious because I'm out on my own, he always is. Oh, what's going on down here? Something flashing. Yeah, he's always anxious when I'm out, bless him. The hue on the slip road, there would be because I'm taking that slip road. <laughs> the dogs will be going do lally tack because I'm out. They'll be glad when I'm home, jumping all over me. And that's when I need to be an octopus and share my all the arms that I can <laughs> pretend that I've got and I stroke them all at the same time. Okay, so I'm here at Lidl's. Um, you can see it just there, look. So I'm just going to pop in and see if I can get some eggs. Oh, I feel a bit knackered now. Um, anyway, went, went to Lidl's, no eggs at all, so I did pick up a French stick in there. Um, I said do the soup if I don't do the soup today I'll do it tomorrow um and then I thought I'll go down to Marks's see if they've got any eggs which is literally next door to Lidl so they had they had three cartons of 12 left they were three pounds so I got one of those um I could have done with buying two but I just it's not fair to buy two I'm not going to eat 12 like in a day I can always get 12 more another day um so I got those and then they had um about half a box here and half a box here of half a dozen eggs they were like one was two pound fifty one was two pound ninety but the dozen was three pounds so that's clearly why they've gone um so yeah eggs are still a bit of a struggle to find but i'm going to text home a one a two it means you know what to do get the kettle on and uh, get a nice cup and I think I fancy a cup of tea. I think I'm gonna ask for a cup of tea this time. It'll take me probably four minutes to get home, depending on traffic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you here, my lovelies. So I just thought I would pop on today, share a little bit of car time with you, update you on a few bits and bobs, and I'll talk to you all in the next video. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you would. As I said, I will talk to you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye for now. Bye-bye.